the motorcycle race suit, or simply race leathers. They significantly reduce the risk for injury when crashing, especially when combined with impact protectors, as shown in research conducted over four decades. But how did the high-tech suits we have today evolve? History time, folks. The motorcycle was invented in the late 1800s and back in the very early days the only protective gear used was full-length boots, commonly used by workers at the time. The rest of their gear was their everyday clothes, including a flat cap to keep their hair in order. While keeping their hair in order may have been beneficial to attract the ladies, the flat caps weren't very useful in the event of a crash. Motorcycle racing became a thing almost as soon as they had been invented. And at the turn of the 20th century, documented racing events were held around Europe, the Americas and Australia. The Isle of Man TT, started in 1907, was a very popular and well-organized event. Researching pictures from those early TTs, I found pictures dated 1908, 1911 and 1914, with riders wearing pilot's leather jackets, leather boots, gauntlet gloves, leather skull caps and pilot's goggles. This appears to be some of the first versions of modern race suits. Helmets made out of canvas and shellac became compulsory items at the 1914 Isle of Man TT. Between 1914 and early 1950s, wearing leather jackets, pants and boots and cork shelled helmets became common safety equipment and road racing events. In the 1950s, Isle of Man racer Jeff Duke became the first rider to adopt the one-piece leather suit. He worked with local tailor Frank Barker to create the suit. According to Jeff himself, he had been experimenting with taping up his suit to make it more aerodynamic and had gained several miles per hour and top speed from these minor modifications. Building on this experimentation, he came up with the idea of the One Piece leathers. In a video I found with Jeff, he also talks about how the tailors made some parts of the leathers thicker, based on where the leathers would wear down in a crash. I found research showing the injury zones and protection requirements of modern leathers. I've crashed many times in my Denise One Piece leather suit, and looking at the risk zones and comparing with where my suit has been worn down, it's almost ridiculous how accurate it is. You can also see that these are where the manufacturers of modern race suits have added extra materials as well as pads. Modern composite padding got introduced in racing suits in the late 1970s and early 80s. They are called composite pads because they consist of a rigid outer shell backed by a soft base. The outer shell, usually made out of thermoplastics or fiber reinforced composites, disperses the load from the impact over the area of the pad, which means there is less or no stress concentration or point load, and the softer base further cushions the shock. This is similar to how two of the layers of a shock absorbing helmet works. The difference is that a shock absorbing helmet has a layer that crushes on impact, which absorbs energy and further softens the impact. This is part of why airbags have become the next big thing in race suit design, but more on that later. The very first back protector was created by designer Mark Sadler and Denise in 1979 upon request from racer Barry Sheen to get better protection of his back. During the 1970s, race suits were also fitted with elastic inserts, just as we have in our modern letters. These inserts are there to enable the racer to move around more freely. The 70s were also the time when the knee-down riding style was popularized. Riders such as Jarno Sarinen, Paul Smart and John Cooper introduced the style, and Kenny Roberts solidified it as the mainstream way of riding a sports bike. Before leather manufacturing caught up with this style of riding, racers used various ad hoc ways of protecting their leathers from being torn, such as layering duct tape and taking apart plastic milk cartons and taping them on the knees. Manufacturers started experimenting with different styles of knee sliders to protect the leathers. For instance, so-called porcupine sliders with soft cylinders protruded from the base sewn into the knee. Others tested out wood, layers of leather and of course plastic. In the late 80s and early 90s, the speed hump was introduced in MotoGP and superbike racing. It was originally invented to reduce the aerodynamic drag created by the rider, as he or she tucks down. In theory, it reduces the turbulence behind the helmet and thus provides some relief for the rider's neck, and also reduces the drag coefficient which enables a higher top speed. 
As technology progressed over the years, the hump now acts as a compartment where things like data logging devices, cooling ducting, water bladders, and electronics related to airbags can be stored. The water bladder system interfaces with an elastic tube with a drinking valve, which are integrated with the rider's helmet. Can you guess when someone first had the idea to integrate airbags into clothing for motorcyclists? This is an interesting one. The first patent for a motorcycle airbag jacket was filed in Hungary 1976. But it wasn't until 1990 that the first airbag vest was introduced as the HIT air vest. These types of air vests are worn over the regular suit and operate by a cable that attaches to the bike. When the rider falls off, the cable pulls a mechanism that releases a pin which punctures a metal cap on a CO2 cylinder which inflates the airbags. These vests aim to protect the chest, shoulders, upper back and sometimes neck. But why do you want airbags and motorcycle leathers in the first place? Remember we talked about how composite pads disperses the load from the impact over the area of the pad, but they do not crush and absorb energy. Well, that is what airbags solve. Airbags do not majorly inhibit the rider's movement, do not add lots of weight, and add a crush zone which absorbs impact. Very clever. The vests are popular amongst track day enthusiasts, but in MotoGP they opted for another type of airbag system, which is operated by sensors instead of a cable attached to the bike. They detect a crash using accelerometers, gyroscopes and a GPS, which enable a more rapid deployment than cable operated ones. The airbag systems used in MotoGP usually have the airbags built into the suit, which enables more free movement for the rider. So the knee down style that started in the 70s led to the knee sliders. While in the 2000s, the elbow down style was popularized by Marc Marquez, which led to the elbow sliders. Remember to subscribe to my channel. There's always something to learn. It's gotta be against the law to look this damn good. Watch out.